notes payable are very similar to a, uh, notes receivable, but now we're on the other side of it. With notes receivable, someone owes you money, so you're going to get cash eventually, or when the payment is due, you're the one who's going to get the payment. With notes payable, now it's on the other foot. You're the one who owes the money, um, and when it's due or mature, you're going to be the one paying the money. So the concepts are the same with notes receivable and notes payable. It just depends on whose eyes you're looking through. So now we are the party that owes the money. So let's say that we take out a $60,000 here. Let's write, let's write some information down. Let's say we've got a $60,000 90-day notes payable. And let's say that it is a 6% note and it was issued on October the 1st. Okay? So, on October the 1st, we would make the following entry. And let's say this was a note for cash. This could be something like a note for merchandise or a note on account. We, if we had an account with someone and we're turning that account into a note now. But let's assume that this is just a loan. So we got cash of $60,000. And now we owe someone a note payable. Oh, well. Didn't mean to switch pages on you there. My hand bumped the wrong thing. Sorry. Okay. Note payable credited for $60,000. Increase that. So we've gotten money. We owe someone money. Now, again, if you had gotten merchandise and you exchanged a note for that, instead of debiting cash, we debit, debit merchandise inventory. Or let's say that you had something you'd purchased on account with someone, but you knew you weren't going to be able to pay for a while, so you negotiated a note in place of that account. So then you would debit accounts payable and credit notes payable. You're getting rid of the account payable and turning it into notes, so you're going to also pay interest on that. Okay. In, in any case, this is going to look very similar. So, let's say that it's now the end of the month, and we're going through and making our accrual entries to do some monthly financial statements. Well, on October the 31st, we would need to accrue interest. So, it's a $60,000, 90-day, 6% note, and it's been 30 days. So I need to accrue 30 days' worth of interest, right? So let's, let's write some things out. It's been 30 days. We're trying to accrue interest. So again, that principal times rate times time. We'll refresh our memory about interest. That's how we're going to calculate our interest amount. So $60,000 times the 6% times... It's been 30 days, so 30 over 360. If we do that calculation, you should see that you get a total of $300 here. So that's how much interest I need to accrue at the end of October. So we're going to use interest expense because, again, now I'm the one who owes the money. So this is an expense to me for $300. And I'm not paying it right now. I'm just accruing it. So we're going to credit interest payable for $300. Okay, there we go. Here's our entry. We've accrued interest for the month of October. Okay, we could go through. That's on October the 31st. On November the 30th, do the same thing. Again, if we're making monthly financial statements, we'd need to make this accrual entry each time. So it's still been 30 days, so the amount's actually going to be the same when we calculate it. So our entry will look exactly the same at the end of November. Now it's the end of December. And actually, we do this on December the 30th, because if this is a 90-day note, the due date or the maturity date is December the 30th. So now I'm ready to pay this note off. So when it matures, we need to take that face value out of notes payable because we don't, we're not going to owe it anymore. I'm going to pay it off. So we debit or decrease that account for the $60,000. Now, how much cash am I actually going to pay? Am I going to pay just $60,000? No, I'm going to pay the full maturity value. So the maturity value is principal plus all of the interest. Okay, So this was a 60-day, let's go all the way back up. I mean, a 90-day note, 6%. So if we take our principal times rate times time, 60,000 times 6% times 90 over 360, 
we'll find that our interest in total is $900. So my maturity value is going to be $60,900. That's the amount of cash that we're going to be paying back. But let's think about that $900 of interest. You've just done two different journal entries to accrue interest. So we've recorded so far two months worth of interest. So I can't make another entry for interest expense for $900. I'd overstate that. The only amount that we have not recorded yet as an expense is December's interest. So let's do that first. Interest, and I tell you what, let me erase this and move it over just a, just a smidge. Interest expense. All right, that was our 60000 here. So it's been, since the last time we made our entry, 30 days. So we need to recognize $300 worth of interest that we have actually incurred. Now, I only put 300 because we've already made entries for the two prior months, and that amount's sitting in what account? We accrued it, and now it's sitting in interest payable, waiting to be paid. Well, now I'm going to actually pay it. So I need to clear that account out for those amounts. So interest payable right now for this bond, for this, ah, for this note, has a total of $600 sitting in it. That's October and November's accruals. So we can clear those two out. So we take that, debit it for $600. Now I have all of the 900 accounted for. And now I can record the maturity value that I'm paying in cash of $60,900. This note was a, a current notes payable. Again, current liabilities are items that you're gonna be paying within the year. So one other thing we can talk about while we're on notes payable is dealing actually with long-term notes payable or long-term debt in general. Any long-term liability, so let's say that you had a note payable and it had a maturity date of um, 20 years from now. That's definitely a long-term liability, not current. But if you have long-term liabilities and a portion of that is to be paid within the next year, you want to take the part that will be paid and put that part as a current liability. We call that the current portion of long-term debt. So let's say you had you know, a $500,000 loan, but $10,000 of that was going to be paid within the next year. That $10,000 needs to be moved out of the long-term liability on the balance sheet and put into a liability that's a current liability called current portion of long-term debt. So you still know it's related to the long-term, but because it's gonna be paid within the year, we wanna move just that little piece into current liabilities.